Hello, come on in. My name is Birch. I'll be your audiologist today. So, come on in, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. So, first off, can I get your name and number for the record? that right now? No? Okay, that's good. Okay, have you noticed any, um, and that was last night, so have you noticed anything out of the ordinary, um, today? You haven't been out much. Okay, well, I'm glad you, uh, you were so quick to book an appointment, because, um, uh, yeah, no, sudden onset hearing loss is, uh, is no joke. So, if there are troubles, um, if that did damage your ear somehow, it's best to, uh, to have a look at it right away. Okay. Okay, so that's of course the main issue we'll be researching and examining, but I also have to um, ask some more general questions um, just to get your, you know, medical history as it regards to your hearing. So, I'm just gonna check some boxes here. Um, do you have any allergies? Okay. Do you have any, uh, colds recently? Or flus? Anything like that? Anything that would, uh, affect your throat or, or nose? Or ears? Okay. Any pain in the ears other than last night? Okay. Any um, discharge? Okay. You've been feeling um, vertigo or dizziness. Okay. Have you had any uh, trauma to the head or the ears, like physical trauma, something hitting you, or you falling down, or anything like that? No. Good. Okay. So, what about your day-to-day -day work, how is your exposure to, um, to loud noises? Any construction work, for example, or listen to loud music in headphones or through speakers? Okay. No, absolutely allowed to listen to loud music. Just prolonged exposure, you know, every day, several hours a day. That, um, yeah, that strains the little, little hair cells in the, uh, in the ear, so, that sounds good. Okay, even before the incident last night, have you had any trouble understanding people or following along in a conversation? Just one-on-one -on -one conversation. How about conversations with several people involved, like, um, like a group of group of people at work or or parties? Okay. Now 
how would you say your hearing is if there's a lot of background noise? Like, for example, if, if you're at a party and there's lots of people talking and you know, maybe the acoustics in the room are the best, maybe there's music playing in the background, are you able to follow along the conversation that you're having? Can you focus on that? Can you, do you feel like you can clearly understand what's being said and communicate? about conversations um, over the phone. Any trouble there? Yes, that's... Okay, that's good. All these things will alert us to, you know, the possibility of hearing loss at different frequencies. So that's why we're asking. But of course, we'll, uh, we'll check that in detail today. Okay, so what we're going to do is first I'm going to just take a look. I'm going to shine a light into your ears left and right and just, you know, check visually, feel around a bit. Um, yeah, so I'll need to get pretty close and uh, touch you on either side of the face. Is that okay? Okay, excellent. We'll start there and afterwards we'll go to a hearing test. You'll be wearing different headphones and uh, you'll hear different noises and all that, but um, I'll explain when we get to that. So, let me just right here. Okay, so just stay perfectly still. I will have a look inside your your jaw, in front of your ears, behind your ears, and on your neck as well, for any swollen lymph nodes. Okay, so just sit still. Can you bite down? Excellent. Yep. 
move on to the audiometry and uh, it's for this part that will be wearing headphones or rather you will be wearing headphones and be needing headphones okay. so I have a little sound device 
this here. I'm just gonna be placing these headphones on your ears. Excellent. So that was the first part of the audiometry test completed. Wasn't so bad, was it? Yeah. Yeah, you did good. You did really great. So let me just um, grab those.
here come the bone conductor. <laughs> no, bone conductors are these things either wireless Bluetooth. Place them. It's like a headset. You can just place it behind your ears, and they pulse, vibrate, oscillate on the bones of your skull and the ears, and that vibration produces a sound that you should be able to hear, same as um, regular, you know, regular hearing. Okay, you're up for that.
we can uh, you know, get up, walk around, get a bit of air from the window if you need to. Need anything to to drink? Cold water. Okay, you're fine. Good. But if you do need anything, just let me know. Okay. No, the test won't be much longer. So you will soon be free to go. Pending my evaluation, of course. <laughs> oh, you're doing good. Don't worry about it. is your speech discrimination, okay? So basically, I'm gonna whisper a bunch of words in your ears, right and left, and you're gonna repeat them back to me, okay? Good. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with numbers. This time I'm gonna introduce a distraction sound. Basically I'm gonna do like this in the other ear. Yeah. To simulate, you know, the clarity of hearing in um, noisy environments. Yeah. Okay, ready? Okay, just repeat the number back to me. Yes, yes. 
this air flexibility of the eardrum. So what we want is sort of a um, sort of a gold middle position, and this is exactly where we want it. So this peaks at 0 0.9, and right at the 0 point here. Okay. If it was a more flat line, that could indicate that there was a perforation or a fluid in the ears, and that would be something that you might need surgery for, but um, that's not the case here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we have the audiogram from the audiometry of the headphones and the bone conductors. That's uh, this graph here. And we can draw a line just to about that. So the y-axis here is um, decibels, starting from minus 10, 0, and going all the way down to 120, quite a lot, like 120 decibels, that's like um, jet engine loud, yeah, normal speaking, that's maybe like between uh, 30, 60 dB, and the uh, x-axis here along here is the frequency, so that's starting at 125 and going up to 8,000. Yeah, no, we, we, most humans can hear our sounds up to about 20,000 hertz, depending on our age, of course. I can't quite hear that high note. I don't know about you, but um, that's not really what we're testing. I mean, deterioration of the high, extreme high frequencies extreme low frequencies as well. That's very normal with aging and that's not something that we need to react to. So we're just testing at around 8,000 at the max because, you know, that's where the most important frequencies are. Human speech, that's right around the middle here. Yeah, and of course human speech is the, you know, the most important thing that, um, that we need our ears for. Music of course, but uh, most music is around the same frequency as well, you know, piano only goes up to 4,000 hertz, so from around 20-25 at the lowest, but enough of that. Uh, so these symbols are O's and X's for right and left here when you're wearing your headphones that measuring air conduction. The left and right brackets are the markers from from the bone conduction from the oscillator, yeah. Oh. And you can see they're following each other very nicely, so that means your bone conduction and your air conduction are equally good. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> That's an excellent question, actually. So there are two types of, of hearing loss that, um, that you could experience. There's uh, conductive hearing loss, and then there's sensory neural hearing loss. So uh, the conductive hearing loss is like a physical problem, for example, with blockages in the ear or a perforated eardrum. And sensory neural hearing loss is something that, that affects the, um, can affect the cochlear vestibular uh, cranial nerve, or the sensory system in the inner ear so that you know, physically sound is being transmitted into your ear but it cannot be sensed properly or it can't be transmitted to the brain that would be sensory neural hearing loss but as you can see these follow each other exactly so there's none of that hmm. yeah no you're quick to notice something like that you're right, the extreme high frequency of 8,000 did drop a bit to the level of 30 dB. It's really nothing, nothing to worry about. Now, yes, the normal level is here from 0 to 20 or 25 if we're being generous. So we would expect a person with a normal hearing or average hearing to be able to pick up uh, frequencies from you know, 100 to 8,000 at the levels of 0 to 20 dB. So like a very little whisper. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, uh, the slight drop off, like I said, could be related to age. It could just be natural, really. Either way, there's nothing to worry about. It's not something that's going to bother you in your everyday life. And yes, I did not see any signs of physical damage to the ear, the eardrum, or the ear canal. And the hearing test, you aced it pretty much. So, um, there's no need to be, um, to be frightened of any hearing loss. Of course, if the ringing sensation should come back, if you experience any other symptoms, pain in the ears, or difficulty hearing in one or both ears, please do book a time. We'll always be happy to see you and perform another test. But, um, for today, that's pretty much it. So, um, Thank you so much for stopping by and uh, take care of yourself, okay? See ya.